So I would like to do the connectivity of the background. So the words matter like and part C in the last theorem that we did. Uh, suppose F is F is the required studies in diagram. A to B and let's see is an instant other than like a between A to B other than A to B. Then the integral of A to B with respect to the alpha can be split it and then the of the same as from A to C, the alpha from C to B, and this type of the alpha. So something very trivial that we take for granted. We need to justify that. We can see that that's that's not so far that we need to build Okay. So when you see this equality, uh, what is the first thing that you observe? Maybe I'm going to get it. So we are saying that this integral can be split in two times. So we can ask the question, does this integral make sense at In the first place. And this integral makes sense. So do these two integrals exist? Obviously if they exist, then the sum would exist. They are two tasks. And this makes sense, this makes sense. And then this, you know, there's some kind of thing. So what is the meaning of so well, what what we should do actually uh, what fact we should verify in such a way that this makes sense? Of? What's the meaning? So what I want to know is that does this entitlement exist for for this, what should we do? What is the precise thing that we should uh, let me. In other words, let me justify that what I would like to say. I'm saying that if a function is integrable on the integral A to B, is it necessary that the same function should be integral on a subset of this interval? Yeah. A to C is a subset of A to B. So, so we haven't done any results which say that okay, if you have, you know, if, if an integral is making sense on the whole interval, it should always make sense on. It should exist on some interval as. So, in other words, first we need to prove that F is. So, if F is integral on A to B, it's also integral on A to C. Yes. Otherwise, these two guys exist. Sir. And then the next thing is going to be. Can you have this um, continuity? There is no continuity. There is no well, continuity. Sir, uh, if f is continuous on closed interval, mm -hmm. then it is also continuous on its subset of that interval. I mean, if f is continuous, yes, this is fine. But 
you know, here you have just the one and the of function. So you can have functions which are written, which are not continuous and are monotonic at So we give a generic argument. So, so this step one, in order to prove this to luck, is going to be that we're going to show that f is in diagonal of it. Let's f belongs to our upper power on in indices. So I'm just going to prove it on HCN without loss of generality. A similar argument can be given from C to B and to This is going to show exactly these two guys exist. Then you know, that's that's what we are looking for. Okay. And to show the integrability, what we need to do. We need to we need to basically say that for every epsilon positive, we can find a partition of this guy okay, in such a way that up, the difference of upper sum and lower sum is less than that. Okay. So in other words, we need to begin with the assumption that matter the epsilon is there. My task is to find the partition of but this epsilon is going to help us already including something what will be that so if if I have an, if I have an epsilon so I don't know that whether the partition for this interval exists or not but I know one thing for certain that so it should exist for a to this because f is integral. So we're going to say that so there exists. So there exists partition P of A to B such that such that the upper sum of U P F alpha difference and less P alpha should be less than epsilon. And then naturally I'm going to say that in this partition I can find also a partition for this subpartition that on which you can have a similar inequality, but for that notation, it will be B intersection A to C. B intersection A to C. How's it? Yes, let's, let's have a guess actually. Okay. So, one of the things that is going to be uh, a bit troublemaking. Okay, let me ask a question. If this partition is going to necessarily contain C, you know, in the sense, obviously it's going, it's, it's C is going to be in the one of solid circles. But if that C is going to be the part of the point circle, we don't know actually. So, uh, P is not enough, you need something else. So, first thing that we should do is that let's insert C into basically this thing. Okay, so let, let P prime play the partition that you are doing and which is basically P and you are inserting C. Why you need C basically inside partition? Because then you, then you can basically create a partition in which the last end point is C. C. Otherwise, you're not going to have C this. Just think about it. If the partition does not contain C, you need basically C to be the one of the end points of partitions. Right? Okay. 
Another thing which is going to be interesting, so if P is already in, uh, sorry, if C is already in P, then E and P prime are when you said this is more this one, sir. This is F would be. Sir, but we need a partition for A to C, right? Uh -huh. We need a partition for A to C. Yeah. P prime will help you, sir. Yes, obviously. Yeah. So, but P prime contains uh, other than C also. So. So, so P prime is a refinement of P. Okay, and it's also partition of the interval into P. Everything is okay. Now I'm saying that consider, consider a set Q at Okay, and that set Q, if it was close enough, is is not going to be P intersection K. To see what is going to be yeah. parameter essentially. Mm -hmm. So that making sure that C is inside this Okay. And my point is that this partition is going to work. So for this partition, what we need to show, we need to show that okay, U F Q alpha, U F and F Q alpha is less than F2. That's what we write Okay? Yeah. We need to also involve the other part of the interval, okay, because because P prime contains P prime is also talking about the other part as well. Otherwise, so. So let Q is this and say R is this. R is P prime intersection. Okay. Where Q is a partition of A to C and R is a partition of okay. Now consider this guy, F P prime and I'm sorry. Keeping in view the upper Riemann sum of P prime, what would be the relationship between the upper Riemann sums of Q and R? So I can write the definition and then I can break that sum into two parts and I can show actually that UF to alpha and UF alpha. And similarly Ls P prime alpha is going to be Ls Q alpha plus L F R alpha. Are you convinced that this must be true? Okay. It's like you can write this as the sum of you know capital M I is multiplied by delta alpha I delta alpha I is the partition. Uh, prime, and then I can break this sum, so I can separate basically those points which lie in Q and those points which like like those different. Okay, so I can break this sum into two parts. You know, so it's like one which is from the endpoints of Q and the other which is from the endpoints. Now let us think about what is going to be the relationship. Because our primary focus is what? So say I would like to do UFQ alpha, difference of UFQ alpha, alpha. Consider difference of 
of two alpha and that's what I'm like. Okay. Can I write this sum in the terms of in the terms of R and these three branches? Yes, sir. Can I write it? Yes, sir. How can I write it? So this is going to be u f p prime alpha minus l f prime p prime say for example alpha and minus u f alpha u f alpha f alpha minus minus Yes. Now what's the interesting thing about this? Can I say, and you should think about it, that why can I say, shall I write from the other side? Let me justify it here. My claim is that this side, like this side, must be less than or equal to U F P alpha minus L F P alpha. Why the string? The same Huh? Let us see P can only be economic and a main of the So if we have A minus B, yes. A minus B is definitely less than A. So it's like we are saying that this difference is going to be A minus B is definitely less than B. And why this should be? It's my claim is this. Let's, let's think about it. That this guy, the last expression, is less than or equal to U F P alpha minus L F P alpha. Okay. Any more explicit arguments on that? That why? You have a different How about considering? That consider the difference between U F P prime alpha and U F R alpha. Consider this difference minus this difference. So here you have C, and here you removed it singly. Okay. And similarly, you are doing that. So this cannot exceed form. This expression. And if this is the case, you are done. That's what you want. That's what you want. That's it. And this implies that F is F is of alpha on H C. Now, obviously, I can make another arrangement. Okay, similar arrangement for U F R alpha and L F R alpha and you're going to have similar inequality and you can have this 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 basically concludes that you know these two integrals is like A to C F B alpha and C to B F B alpha exist these guys exist 
they make sense actually. You can integrate it. Here, here. The next is to basically think about what should be done. Yes, yes. 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 So keeping in view the same partitions, keep your arm and think about this impact. That's the other. And uh, if this die less than or equal to U F P alpha, happy with that? Why? Because this is infinite. This is infinite. But U F P alpha can be written as U F Q alpha plus. U F R R alpha. Right? Okay. And we are at this. Huh? And I'm saying now, I'm saying now, Sir, it was B or B. It is not 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 B. You and I both are both are And my claim is that this guy, my claim is that this guy is less than, tell me why, tell us Q alpha, so it's like a remark, plus. F R alpha and can I say that that's smaller than plus epsilon? <laughs> Just think about it. Can I say that U F Q alpha minus L F P alpha is smaller than epsilon by two? Q alpha. Let's bring this on the other side. And similarly, I can write same thing, but for R, which is smaller than epsilon, and then just some of these inequality we're going to have. This. And this guy is less than diagonal from A to C, F. P alpha plus C to B F P alpha plus alpha. Should be happy with it. Why this should be the case? Do I get that? No, oh, you get it. F is integrable. Okay. So their difference can be made smaller than any epsilon you want. Yes, you ah, okay, so that should be Q. Oh, okay. Why this should be true? This is our Sunday. What our Sunday these are supreme ups. And what we got interesting, just think about it. Are we not happy by getting this basically? So what we did, we said that the difference of this guy and these two numbers 
Okay, this is good, but not good enough. When it would be good enough? If you will have an absolute, basically, an absolute. But otherwise, we need to show that it's bigger than minus sub. Then, what happens? Okay. Okay, sir. So the way we got this thing, this inequality of epsilon by two and epsilon by two, we did those. Yeah, also there are also there is a minus epsilon by nine as well. So we say epsilon by nine. If epsilon we lay, two different two inequalities we add to it. So we have to add minus to it. Minus epsilon by nine. So the next is what? How should I begin? What should be the first step? Okay. The first step is going to be, I know that A to B, F D alpha is bigger than or equal to L. Okay. L prime alpha. Then we'll just sum of Alpha, Q alpha, Q alpha, alpha. Okay. And then you know, we have something similar. It's bigger than. It's bigger than. Bigger than how? It's bigger than. Okay. It's bigger than U F Q alpha. Plus L F R alpha U F R alpha. But uh, U F U F R alpha. Oh, sorry. U F R alpha. But by subtracting up. No. This is not adding anything. Because that. By subtracting sufficiently big epsilon, you get beta. Okay, let's let me let me do that algebra again. Imagine you have the same thing. So you have Q alpha, okay, uh, minus epsilon by two is less than L F P alpha. Are we happy with that? Expect Just twisting the inequality. So we will have similar for uh, alpha, we will have similar for R. Uh, sorry. Don't rely on my notation. Okay? <laughs> just, just, just trying to make sense of it, what I am saying, because you know, I often say things correctly, but you know, the right thing. But I just focus on things I want. Okay? Alright, so you're going to have this. So if we have this, this should be bigger than. Similarly, a to, A to C of B alpha plus C to B of B alpha minus alpha. And you can bring that there on the other side. And you can what? You get finally inequality that absolute of this guy. This difference can be made arbitrarily smaller. Hence, we have the result. Okay. Let's have fun with these ones. Okay, I would like to. Since we have time now, yeah. 
So don't worry about these big proof sets. Okay. Carry on doing exercises and you know the small things that we are doing. But it's it's quite important that we should see the proof at least once in our life. At least once in our life. <laughs> Hasta luego, ¿cómo te lo tocó?